Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I added this headlight to this 724 Honda snowblower. Stay tuned. So the first thing you want to make sure is, does that machine have power? So on this machine, there's an AC wire that comes out of the recoil assembly right behind it. And this goes to the stator and it's putting out uh, AC voltage. It's about uh, 5 volts at idle and about 15 volts when it's throttled up so I put a meter on it and verified its AC voltage not DC voltage so I'll need to rectify it if I want to run an LED type of light which is what I want to do because they use very little power and they're very bright. Here's the stator wire on some other machines this is an Aaron's Deluxe 28 with a Briggs engine here's another one a little newer Aaron's 24 with a Briggs engine same setup this is a Toro 826, I believe. It's 2006 with a Tecumseh engine. Pretty much the same setup. And here's another MTD machine with the same setup as the other Tecumseh engine. This is a leave sucker, and I threw my phone behind the engine, and sure enough, there's a stator wire there. There's no use for it on this, but I'm sure they just bought a, a boatload of engines, and they happen to have stators with them. This is not a stator wire. This is a low oil sensor on a Honda engine. So uh, don't hook it to that. You won't get any power. So let's take a look at the parts I'm using. This uh, little black box here is a converter. Converts AC to DC. This small LED light over here is kind of cool. They're like three bucks, so I grabbed one. My uh, theory on that was to put it underneath the dash panel so it would shine down on your feet. So it give you a little bit of light where your feet are. This light is really nice. It's um, cast aluminum heat sink on the back. It's got several uh, big bright LEDs in it. It's um, 27 watts and uh, I got it at a place called uh, superbrightleds.com. I bought a lot of stuff from them and pretty good. It also has a lock for the bolt so you don't have to get a wrench in there. So um, this is the stuff that we're going to use and I'll talk a little bit more about why I'm using this regulator. So I've seen a lot of these LED conversions on YouTube and I see guys taking a full wave uh, rectifier, diode set, and capacitors and uh, you know taping them all together and wrapping tape around them and running them up. It's kind of a crappy way to do it. So this unit does exactly the same thing. It uh, takes AC power in and runs it through a full wave bridge and converts that AC to pulsed DC all positive. And then the uh, capacitor stores that charge to kind of smooth it out out to your load. So this unit is 12 bucks all done uh, and it's hermetically sealed in epoxy and uh, so it takes AC in and gives you a pretty solid DC out. Doesn't matter about a few ripples here and there because it's just for light. So since the machine didn't come with a light, I had to fab up a little bracket and I had some steel angle iron kicking around. So I fabbed up a little bracket and um, mounted it right over the belt cover using uh, two of the 10 millimeter bolts. And uh, just something I fabbed up quick on the MIG and here it is. Just a little bracket with a hole on the top and a little tab to connect it to the machine. Um, came out okay, it's fine for what it is. Um, one of the things I use is this Plasti Dip stuff to coat it in. I've used that before and it's pretty durable and uh, prevents it from chipping and stuff like that, so it's pretty good. So here's the bracket being mounted to the machine. I'm just checking for a final fit here. I'm using one of the belt covers, uh, bolts on top, and a side bolt for one of the brackets inside the machine. So I'm just kind of dry fitting it here to make sure it's going to work right. And Everything looks uh, pretty good here, so we'll go ahead with it. Okay, so here's the bracket and the light just kind of loosely put on the machine. I'm just checking the size and making sure everything fits right and that the view from the operator panel is still good. The light doesn't block anything, but it's high enough to give you a good view of the um, snow in front of you. So that looks pretty good. So now we're going to take the voltage regulator here, converter, and I'm going to just uh, trim the 
tabs off it because where I want to put it on the machine it's just a little bit too long uh, unfortunately I don't have a way to bolt it to the machine I'm actually gonna use two-sided tape and really what I should have done is built this thing into the bracket somehow um, but of course you know every time you make something brand new you always think of what you could have done better at the end and um, this will work just fine but if, if I had to do it again I would uh, make that uh, bracket so the converter just hangs underneath so next time so here we're gonna mount the regulator to the engine it's going right underneath the gas tank on this little flat panel here that's why I had to take the tabs off it again if I thought of it before I would have created that bracket so it held the regulator right in it so here I have the regulator all trimmed up. I have two connectors on the positive and negative output so I can run a front and a rear light. I may add that tiny LED underneath the dash panel to light up your feet. The headlight's all trimmed up to length and has connectors and insulators on it so that's ready to go as well. These um, little tiny LED lights are really cool and they put out a decent amount of light. So I may add one of these underneath the dash panel to shine down on your feet, but uh, I'm not going to add it right now. I just wanted to make sure I had connections for it. So here we are with all the hardware mounted. Everything's looking good. I have the light mounted, wire running over to the regulator, which is mounted underneath the tank to that bracket with industrial two-sided tape. And um, the wires to the stator are all hooked up and we're ready to go here. So again, I probably would have put that converter inside the uh, light bracket itself if I made another one, but it's probably fine there. It looks, it looks pretty neat and works out pretty well. So. so here's the setup running on the machine. Everything's in place, looking good. And um, just the final view of everything. Next, we'll take a look at the light and see how it runs in terms of uh, any flicker. So here's the light at idle. You can see there's a little bit of flicker and then as I increase the RPMs just off of idle it goes away and it's nice and bright solid no flicker at all so it looks pretty good. So here's a look at the final install with the light in a little bit more detail on how the bracket is mounted. So I'm just using one of the bolts on the bottom that was there and the um, belt cover on the uh, top near the, where the cables go in there. So that's it. Looks pretty good. Should serve us well. Let's take a look at this thing and see what it looks like at night. So here we are with the machine started and just sitting at idle. You see a little bit of flicker, some of that's a light, some of it's the camera, but as soon as you just roll it off of idle, it all goes away and comes up to full brightness. So it uh, looks pretty bright. I have the light tilted down a little bit, so most of the light is in front of the machine, but you, you can adjust that as you want. Um, I think it's more than enough light to get the job done and uh, the location of the light is great so you don't have these crazy lights hanging off the handlebars or in the way and uh, that's part of the goal so looks pretty good if you have any questions leave them in the chat and uh, i'll see if i can answer them thanks for watching